This was unsettling to me because I felt something inside me, something sacred and vulnerable and tr transcendent that seemed to be reaching out to something infinitely bigger than I was. But I never encountered anything in my family or culture that really acknowledged this or reflected this. So, like we so often do, I embodied my father's beliefs that all there was was physical reality and scientific reason and logic were the only sane and sensible ways to perceive the world. Uh, when I was 10 years old, I, I, I started in the theater, and that's all I've done for my entire life. I've spent my entire child or my adolescence and my professional uh, life, I've spent it all in the theater. And it's been a lot of fun, and I've been extremely lucky in my career as an actor. I, I, I once spent uh, three weeks on morphine dressed as a cockroach performing for 300 kids on a daily basis. I had kidney stones. I was doing a kid's show. <laughs> I, I, once, uh, I have traveled around the world performing a puppet show. And, uh, and I once lived in the woods for six months with a mime and a ballerina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's not the beginning of a joke. I once... <laughs> I lived in the woods for six months with a mime and a ballerina. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've been extremely lucky. It's been a lot of fun. But you, it, it, might come not, it might not come as much of a surprise for you to realize that uh, you don't make much money as a stage actor. But the idea is that I get rewarded in other ways, right? I, I may not make a lot of money, but I'm doing what I love, right? right? <laughs> well, that formula only works if I'm loving what I'm doing. And after 10 years of working as a professional theater actor, I was left feeling empty and frustrated. See, I worked for almost all of the professional theater companies in Nova Scotia, and I was longing for someone to, to acknowledge this sacred, vulnerable thing inside of me, inside of all of us, and say, this thing exists. Let's, let's work from here. Let's share this thing. And it never happened, and I was extremely unhappy with my life. So I figured I could either do something about it myself or I could quit the theater. Uh, but I was terrified of this sacred, vulnerable thing that I felt. I felt like by thinking it existed, it meant that I was stupid and that by talking about it to other people, they would think that I was insane. So I had a long conversation with the rationalist atheist in my brain. And we came to an agreement that I could employ the scientific method. I would follow my instincts, I'd value this feeling, and I'd interact with reality as an experiment. But I would use only my perception as the data that I was going to value. So I wasn't going to take anyone else's word as for what was going on here in existence. And so I started by learning to read tarot cards. <laughs> We must walk before we can run. <laughs> but you know, I, I, was, I was blown away at the insight that they seemed to have on my inner world and my life situation. So I started to try and take their advice. And then I encountered something called chaos magic. Now, one of the basic ideas of chaos magic is that the world that all of us live in is innately magical, but we generally take this for granted. Uh, for example, everything around us that isn't nature started in someone's imagination. Everything around us that isn't nature started in someone's imagination. So right now, we are existing in an imagined environment. And chaos magic says that you can work with yourself and learn how to make your imagination reality. This seemed like something I could get behind. It seemed like the permission or the authority that I needed in order to be able to say that this sacred feeling that I had inside of me was significant. So with the wind of this in my sails, I started my own theater company, the Temple of Dionysus Theater Company. And I found other actors who felt as I did that there was something sacred and vulnerable in them that wasn't being expressed on stage. 
And I said to them, let's all spend a few weeks and let's make a piece of theater. But let's pretend that instead of just making a show, we're all doing a magic ritual to summon a divine entity that will manifest itself through us in the form of a show. No wonder I was worried people would think that I was insane, right? <laughs> now, the show that we made was incredibly satisfying to all of us. We, we felt we were really doing the thing that we wanted to do when we said we wanted to become actors, finally. And not only that, our show won an award and we got fantastic reviews and then I started getting offered better roles in kind of professional gigs. So I continued to work in a sacred, magical context and the work that I did started to mean more to me. So, I was starting to think this magic stuff. Maybe there's something to it. And then I was offered to play the role of Hamlet in the park. So I treated the entire performance as a massive occult ritual. I, I consecrated the ground where the performance took place. I said incantations before and after the show to open up a channel so that the character of Hamlet, the 400-year-old entity of Hamlet, could enter me and use my body for the duration of the show. And the performances were received very well. One night after the show, an old lady walking with a cane came up to me and she looked me in the eye and she said, I'm 93 years old and I have seen Hamlets all over the world for 93 years. <laughs> and you were the best one. And then she kissed me. <laughs> oh my God, no. Are you kidding me? It was, was one of the most amazing experiences in my life. I mean, that's, that's, that's what you want when you play a role, is for the old lady to come up and say, You're, you got it, kid. That was the one. So I, I, I won an award for my performance and uh, things. And then I was offered even bigger, higher paying gigs and in, in more profession, in bigger shows. And I continued to put my work in a sacred, magical context. And then a television producer sees me in a show and then writes me a part in his TV show and flies me to Europe to be in it. And oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm beginning to think this magic stuff. Maybe there's something to it. Now, I don't want to give any of you the impression that the material success was what I was after or that it was even my greatest reward. All that I knew was that I felt this sacred, vulnerable thing inside of me pounding on the inside of my chest to acknowledge it. And even though I knew it meant that I was stupid and insane, I valued this feeling and my life has been fundamentally transformed ever since. My life has more meaning than it ever, 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 ever has. The big J, Jesus, saith, seek, and ye shall find. Now, the rationalist atheist in my brain that still is there says to me that that's just a spiritual application of a confirmation bias. But Hamlet says, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. There is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. So, if that's to be the case, then I can determine that we live in an uncaring, meaningless, soulless world. And I will probably find that that's the case. Or I can insist that there is good inside of me, inside of all of us. And that the things happen for a reason, and that all of us are living inside of some kind of benevolent meta-consciousness that is trying with all of its might to be kind to us and to make us better people. Maybe I will find that that's the case. And so, many, 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 many blessings to all of you. 
may you seek kindness for yourself and for others. Thank you. <laughs>